Welcome to our Sunday school children once again. Let's pray now before the Lord. Eternal Father, we are thankful to Thee for bringing us again to worship Thee and to hear Thy word. And O oh Lord, especially on this Easter Sunday, we do pray that Thou would help us even now to think upon the Lord Jesus Christ, even for His sake, in His name. Amen. Our first hymn is hymn number 40, There is a green hell far away. Bible reading is taken from Luke chapter 23 and verse 33 to 43. Luke chapter 23, verse 33 to 43. And when they were come to the place which is called Calvary, there they crucified him. And the malefactors, that's the thieves, one the right hand and the other on the left. Then said Jesus, Father, forgive them, for they know not what they do. And they parted his raiment, that's his clothing, and cast lots, that is they gambled over his clothing. And the people stood beholding. And the rulers also with them derided him, saying, He saved others, let him save himself, if he be Christ, the chosen of God. And the soldiers also mocked him, coming to him and offering him vinegar, and saying, If thou be the king of the Jews, save thyself. And a superscription that is a writing, also was written over him in letters of Greek and Latin and Hebrew. This is the King of the Jews. And one of the malefactors, that is one of the thieves, which were hanged, railed on him, saying, If thou be Christ, save thyself and us. But the other answering rebuked him, saying, Dost not thou fear God, seeing thou art in the same condemnation? And we indeed justly, for we receive the due reward of our deeds. 
but this man hath done nothing amiss. And he said unto Jesus, Lord, remember me when thou comest into thy kingdom. And Jesus said unto him, Verily I say unto thee, Today shalt thou be with me in paradise. And may the Lord bless that reading of his word to us. Let's turn to our next hymn, which is hymn number 137. 137. I know of one who shed his blood for me. Lesson today is concerning the trial, death, and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. We all know, I'm sure, the account of the Lord Jesus Christ. We are all aware of what happened to him from when he was born in his childhood, when he was older when he was a man and what happened to him and how he started as a young man and we all know how much he was hated by many and especially the chief priests and the scribes and the Pharisees many hated him they wanted nothing to do with him and they hated him for many reasons and so today we want to think about the time when the Lord Jesus finally is brought to trial by those who hated him. They always wanted to have him killed. Here was their chance and they used a man, a man who was in the company of the Lord Jesus Christ, one of the disciples of the Lord Jesus. Jesus Christ. Can you imagine that one of your best friends betrays you to others? One of your best friends is actually an enemy inside that company of friends. He is actually thinking about betraying you. And Judas, he betrayed the Lord into the hands of those who despised the Lord. Who rejected him the chief scribes and the elders of the people they hated the Lord and so they bring him to trial and we want to think about two trials today and then his death on the cross and his resurrection so we want to think firstly about the Jewish trial. You see, the scribes and the elders of the people, they decided to try Christ and they wanted to pretend as though they were having justice for him. They were trying to pretend as if they really believed in the truth. They have what we call the Jewish trial. You've seen what happens in the court. Imagine if someone committed a crime, maybe a thief, steals from a shop. Well, that thief might very well get caught. And when and if and when he is caught, then he has to be taken to prison. 
But before he can be taken to, to prison, he has to go and be tried into a, a court. And in that court, there will be a judge. There will be people called the prosecution. There will be the defense, those defending the thief. And the prosecution, prosecution will be against the thief concerning what he has done. And there will be a charge, and that charge will be theft. He stole. And obviously, apart from the judge, apart from those who defend the criminal, normally lawyers, and then the prosecution, who usually comes from the government, he has some accusation against the accused. And then there will be the accused, who will be that thief. And so... In the case of the Lord Jesus Christ, at the Jewish trial, there was a judge, Caiaphas, and he was jealous. He wanted the Lord Jesus dead. And then there was the prosecution, the Jewish council. They also wanted to get rid of him. And the charge they, they had against him was that he has committed Blasphemy, in other words, because the Lord Jesus Christ agreed that he was God and equal with God the Father and the Spirit, he was charged with blasphemy. But you see, the Lord Jesus Christ wasn't guilty of blasphemy because he was telling the truth. He is God. He's always been God. And But the... Jewish council and the high priest, they didn't want to hear that. All they wanted to do was to get rid of the Lord Jesus Christ. So they bring these accusations against him, false accusations. And you know, no one defended the Lord Jesus Christ. There was no one there to defend him. All his disciples had gone, everyone else had fled from him. He was all alone. And he didn't say anything when they began to charge him with that charge of blasphemy. He kept quiet. But the Lord Jesus, he is God. He was God. He, he is God and he will always be God. And so he wasn't guilty of blasphemy. And you know, these men, the judges and the, the judge and the Jewish council, when they tried to bring witnesses, the witnesses couldn't agree amongst themselves. But nonetheless, the high priest decided when he heard the Lord Jesus Christ agreeing that he was the Son of God, he said there's no need for further witnesses. Jesus Christ is guilty of blasphemy and therefore if you have blasphemed according to the Jewish law, you are guilty of death. And so they sentenced the Lord Jesus Christ to death. But then there was only one problem. They had no power to have him put to death. They didn't have that power. They were under the Roman government. So what could they do? Well, they decided to cook up some other accusation against the Lord Jesus Christ. And they thought to themselves, the only one who could kill or make sure the Lord Jesus Christ dies is Pilate. But what shall we say to Pilate? Well, we can get some accusations. One of the accusations could be that the Lord Jesus Christ, he wants to take over government. He says he's a king and he wants to take over the government from Caesar. And so people like Pilate won't have any job when Christ becomes king and if he takes over. And so they cooked up some lies. They made up some lies so that the Lord Jesus, he could be taken by Pilate. And put to death. So early in the morning. 
after the Jewish trial, the chief priests and the elders, why they tied up the Lord Jesus and took him to Pilate, who was the Roman governor for the area where they were. And so they took him to be tried by the Roman government. Uh, when they got to Pilate, Pilate, when they got to Pilate, he didn't see any reason why Christ should die. He couldn't see anything. Oh, but the chief scribes and the elders, they said, no, no, no. Christ is making trouble everywhere with his teaching. He started in Galilee and has come all the way here to Judea. And Christ is a troublemaker. But you see, Pilate, he said, I don't see anything wrong with Christ, with this man. This man is innocent. But you know, Pilate, he was afraid of the people because the people and the religious leaders, they were determined to have the Lord Jesus Christ killed. So Pilate, he became a coward. He knew that the Lord Jesus was innocent, but he decided to give up the Lord Jesus to the religious leaders and the people. He decided that he'll do what they wanted to have the Lord Jesus Christ to be put to death. But before he could have the Lord Jesus put to death, he tried to speak to them one more time. He says, look, who do you want released? Barabbas, one of the thieves, one of the three thieves that were about to be crucified. Would you like Barabbas to be released? Or would you like Jesus to be released? And so they were asked whether they wanted one of the thieves, <coughs> one of the murderers, Barabbas, whether he would be released or the Lord Jesus. Barabbas a thief and a murderer. Can you imagine that? Being exchanged for the Son of God, the Lord Jesus who was innocent. Oh, these chief priests and the scribes, the elders of the people and the scribes, oh, they knew who they wanted. They wanted Barabbas. They wanted the murderer, the thief. And so they shouted back, give us Barabbas. And so Pilate reluctantly gave up the Lord Jesus, but he tried one more time, Pilate did. He announced to the chief priests and crowd, I find no basis, I don't see any reason for having this man killed. But they all shouted, crucify him, crucify him. And Pilate gave in finally and he washed his hands. And the soldiers led the Lord Jesus to the cross and they crucified him with two thieves, one hanging on a cross on the left and the other on the cross to the right of him. And as the Lord Jesus hung on the cross, some in the crowd mocked him. They shouted out the words, He saved others, but he cannot save himself. Oh, but they didn't know that he was hanging there, not for himself, but for sinners. And then, suddenly, there was darkness all around for three hours. Was darkness. Can you imagine that? Black, pitch black, darkness. And in that darkness, 
the Lord Jesus, he cried out a final word. He said, he cried out and said, It is finished. And then he died. But what was finished? Oh, the work he had come to do on earth was finished. Sinners could be set free, could be ransomed from the power of sin, from the power of death and hell and Satan. And so the Lord Jesus, he died on Calvary's cross. And you know, shortly after that, the Lord Jesus, why, his body was collected by a man called Joseph. Joseph went to Pilate and begged for the Lord's body. Joseph came from a place known as Arimathea, Joseph of Arimathea. He went to beg for the Lord's body. He took the body of the Lord Jesus and placed it in an empty grave, in an empty tomb. And there the Lord Jesus lay, his body lay, but his spirit had gone up to the Father because before dying, he said, into thine hands, speaking to the Father, into thine hands, I place my spirit. And so his spirit went up to God, but his body was put in a grave. Children, young people, let's pause there for a moment and think about the Lord Jesus Christ and his death. Why did the why did the dear Lord die for us? Why did he die? Well, he died because he loves us. He died to pay the price of our sin. He died to unlock the gates of heaven and let us in. And he died to make us fit for heaven. Oh, what a wonderful saviour he is, children. Have you trusted in the Lord, children? Look what he did for us. Look what price he paid for you and I, that we might at last go into heaven. And be with him forever. Well then children. The death of the Lord Jesus. Was not the end of it. On the third day. He rose again. And he burst open. That stone. That was placed at his tomb. And the Lord Jesus Christ. He showed himself king over death. He had conquered death. He had beaten it. And now he is alive. Him, he who was dead, is now alive. And you know, many days after rising from the dead, and after many had seen him, the Lord Jesus went up into heaven, and one day he is coming back, back again. One day the Lord Jesus is coming back again. The question for you, children and young people, is will you be ready on that day when the Lord Jesus comes back again? Or when? If and when you die, before he comes back, will you be ready to hear his call? 
I hope, children, that you'll be ready. Don't say I'm, I'm too young to die. No one is too young to die. There are many young people who, many children and young people who will die. Some young children, babies, some toddlers, four-year-olds, seven-year-olds, ten-year-olds, thirteen, twenty-year-olds. Many young people who die even before they've gone far into life. So, don't say you're too young to die. Everyone who can sin, everyone who sins, every sinner is able to die at any time. And so children, as we think of the death, the trial, death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ, let's think of his great love for us that he was willing to suffer for us that we might go to heaven he had no need to do that he had no need for us but oh his love that's what caused him to suffer at the hands of men and to die on Calvary's cross and to rise up from the dead he was thinking all the time of all those who would trust in him. Will you trust in him this day, children? I pray and I trust that you will hear these words and trust in the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Our final hymn is hymn number 135, Coming Suddenly, Maybe Soon. The Lord is coming soon. He may be coming tonight. Are you ready, children? Coming Suddenly, Maybe Soon. children we have thought today of the trial death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus Christ we hope that you can come to him even now upon your knees and so we also hope that you'll be able to join us again for our online Sunday school next Sunday let us pray Dear Father, help us now as we think upon these words of the trial, death and resurrection of the Lord Jesus Christ. Help us to turn away from sin and come to Christ in repentance and faith. And may his name, even this day, be lifted up. And may we this day praise his name even for saving us from sin, for his sake. Amen.